be interactive, collaborative. I find we learn a lot more from one another through kind of a dialogue. So you're gonna have, I'm gonna have some prompts for you, thus your handout to follow along. Um, and we'll have several activities for you to kind of break out and share information. At any point, if you wanna ask a question, pop in, signal your hand, um, whatever you'd like to do. Um, career development is an area that I'm really passionate about. So as somebody that spent 12 years in corporate America, uh, I had a lot of pivot points, so those were career transitions where I went from different industries to different functional areas, um, went back to school, got my MBA down at Indiana University, and I kind of was checking all these boxes throughout my career of the things that I thought you were supposed to do but maybe not all the things I really wanted to do or was good at. So now I've had my business pivot point uh, for about four years. So I travel around the country speaking about career development, leadership development, and our latest work around men as allies for women. So I actually have a book about male allies. We're not gonna talk too much about that tonight, but if that topic intrigues you, that's something I'm very passionate about, um, about having equal opportunities. And I think we can really help each other to kind of close some of the gaps that we see but without uh, being remiss this is my daughter Jane so she is really the passion for why I do what I do uh, she's four just started pre-k all sorts of excitement happening at our household and uh, I really feel like if I can be a part of creating environments working um, with my clients working with organizations to close some of these gaps to provide tools for leadership development career development and gender equality that the world will be so much better for her someday uh, when she enters the workforce I, I certainly hope she has more equal opportunities so if I get to be a small part of that that is really why I do what I do so we're going to kick off with an icebreaker and I know this is a big question but I want you to kind of close your eyes if you could just bear with me Close your eyes and think about the question, what do you want, okay? And specifically, I want you to think about aspirations, goals, personally and professionally, things that you want in your life. So think about yourself, kind of three years out, what are you doing, who are you with, what does your personal and professional life look like? Kind of hold that vision in your mind's eye. And I want you to, this is the first prompt, in our handout, I want you to write down everything that comes to mind. So what did you see? What were some goals, aspirations, elements of your career and life? So personal and or professional, whatever you saw, no filter, do not judge. There is no wrong answer to this question, but everything you saw when you closed your eyes and thought about what do I want? Tell me about that future version of yourself. What are you doing? Who are you with? What does that experience look like? everything that came to mind. So you might wanna be thinking about health and fitness. You might wanna think about financially. You might wanna think about your job. You might wanna think about your family. Kinda of think about all those major aspects of your life. What is it that you want? All right, I'm seeing some pens slow down. Keep, keep them going. Everything that you saw when you closed your eyes, these are some clues to the things that are important to you, to the things that might be missing, to the things that might be there. But when you had that vision, what did you see? Try and grab all of the different aspects of that. What do you want? So this exercise, the reason I love this exercise, and I always have some interesting ahas from the clients I work with on this, is that when you see it in your brain, when you close your eyes and you see it, it's a mental trick. So your brain's like, oh, we've already done this before, right? It actually starts kind of mapping behavior to support that vision the more you bring it to your forefront of your brain, okay? So who would like to share? Anyone have something that popped up for them? Please. Okay, successful hypnosis practice. 
Ooh. Yeah. Stop Smoking Clinic. Ah. Um, still with my husband. We've been married 43 years. I can't imagine not having him. <laughs> Six figure income. All right. Winters in Aruba. Ooh. A staff. Three books in print and my house. Ah, those were perfect. So did you see how she covered all those key areas of her life, personally and professionally? So there was some family, there were some business aspects, there was some vacationing that was happening. I love that. I love that. Anyone else want to share? Piece of what she saw? It's a safe place, so we all have to agree this is a safe place to share. Please. Um, what do I want? Uh, I put a traveling photographer, a cartoonist, marathon runner. And have money. Ah, oh, have money. Hey, that's great. We'll get more specific with that one, but I like that as a starting point. Okay, marathon runner, photography, is that what you said? Okay, awesome. So all sorts of different areas. Yeah, yeah, please. I didn't have a very specific vision, but I just want to be a good role model for my niece. Yeah, a good, oh, a good role model for your niece. That's so personal. Like, that's a great personal goal. Absolutely. Um, finally, finishing my master's degree in education. Mm. Uh, working with special needs. Yep. Feeling accomplished and making a difference. Yeah, I mean, feeling whether accomplished. Whether that means personal or professional, maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, okay, so making a difference, finishing a degree. I love it. So some great nuggets we have here. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper on each one of these, but this is just kind of a, a starting point to build from to think about your career game plan. I'm going to explain more about what I mean by a career game plan. So specifically what we're going to work on today are these four key things. We're going to craft a purpose statement. So let's think about this as kind of like your personal personal mission statement. It's a little different than a corporate mission statement um, because it might be somewhat aspirational. It might be, hey, I'm not quite doing this yet, but this is where I want to go. Um, we're going to build some goals. We're going to talk about the importance of competencies. So people from the educational environment all appreciate this, but these are the skills, behaviors, attributes you want to strengthen your plan with and continue to evolve and develop. And then the final piece is thinking about key action steps. So. My goal is to kind of take this high level today all the way from what it is I want to what do I need to do tomorrow? Which we have a tendency to think about what do I need to do tomorrow right away and we forget all the high level stuff. So if you think, has anyone participated in strategic planning or yeah, for a business, you know, for an organization? This is kind of like your own personal strategic plan. We're gonna start high level first then we'll dig into the nuts and bolts of it at the end today. So this is what I call the career game plan. Um, when I started Pivot Point, I did a lot of research with successful leaders all around the country, different industries, different functional areas, different educational levels. And the things they told me that were super important to them is that they had a plan for success. And this sounds straightforward, right? But how many people have a plan, a three-year plan for your own career, your own life? All right, a couple hands, that's terrific, right? That's probably why it was so clear for you when you had the vision, it just popped right out. Um, so there's actually an 80% higher success rate associated with having a plan versus not having a plan. So I always joke, like, how are you gonna get there if you don't know where you're going? How is anyone gonna help you get there if you don't know where you're going? So it's unique to you, it's visual and simple, and it has a much higher success rate when you have a plan in place, when you have a vision, you have goals, and you have clear action steps to get there. So I'll map through this process with you today. Um, think about this as kind of a, a visual that we're going to be breaking apart into different pieces of the career game plan for you. And you'll walk away with all the resources to build this out yourself. I have a workbook that goes along with this um, that Kate has shared some of your information. So I'm happy to electronically send all this material to you as well. So. So that is the game plan, and specifically there are four key things on the game plan. So I call it kind of the pivot line statement, your purpose statement to start. The goals, think about it as kind of a tree. Once you have a statement of purpose, the goals that hang from there, and these we're probably gonna put in the time frame of three-ish years. Okay, so in my research, when I talked with, I, I looked at a lot of career development tools, individual development plans, which organizations love to use, right? They're kind of like one year. And what's the problem with one year goals? 
Too short? So, yeah, super tactical, really short. It's like the things you're already doing, finishing school, uh, getting this certification. Those are the types of things I hear. But when you stretch yourself and you think three years from now, you're going to put something out there in the universe that you probably haven't already thought about or you're not actively pursuing. But that's where the plan comes in place about, if I want to be here, what are, what's the gap and how do I close that? The challenge with like five-year goals or 10-year goals is they're so pie in the sky that it doesn't feel even reachable, right? So we kind of check out, well, that's five years from now. That's not super exciting to do today, right? And so that's why I like three-year goals. Um, I mentioned competencies, skills, behaviors, attributes. These are the things that you're striving to improve on. Uh, there's like over 200 different competencies out there. I think we can overcomplicate this. But if you think about it just as simply as, what are the things I need to be honing? What crafts do I want to get better at? Maybe that's analytical skills. Maybe that's speaking skills. It's going to look different for you based on what you want. But you got to get crystal clear on what are the skills I'm working towards developing so that I can be that future version of myself that I want to be. And then the action steps. So those are the four pieces. Um, so quotes I gathered from the research that I think are, are kind of helpful and hopefully help guide you along your path. Uh, I had someone share, while it was hard for me to start over mid-career, I remained humble and asked myself, what do I want? By answering that question, I had a good set of guardrails on what I wanted and what I did not want. And I think that's really important to think about your game plan as guardrails, okay? So a lot of times it means saying no to things. It's things that I don't want that aren't aligned with that. But maybe somebody else thinks it's important that you do that, right? A lot of times we're so busy saying yes to everything around us that we're actually in fact saying no to the things that are really important that are about our game plan. So think about this as kind of checkpoints. It's gonna keep some boundaries for you. It keeps some focus in those lanes and the things that are outside don't make it into the plan. And we don't choose not to focus as much on those things. But this is a reflection point. I mean, for me, that visioning exercise I did with you about what do I want, I teach this a lot, right? I've probably taught this over 100 times now. Every time I ask that question and I think about it for myself, it is different. A little bit different, right? Sometimes it was, uh, I want to be speaking on stages at national conferences. Sometimes it was, I really want to make a tool, a book, something that helps support leadership development. Other times it's something simple like leading virtual training classes. I really enjoy being in my PJs and teaching people stuff. It is very fun uh, to get to imp impact lots more people that way. So I just say that those all are synergistic, right? They're not completely different, but by checking in with yourself on what I want on a regular basis, you're gonna get clues, right? To help you guide those guardrails and keep them specific and keep them unique to you. Uh, I love this one too. I had a client of mine that said, I had not managed people previously and I was a high potential individual contributor. I knew I needed to show my potential, so I asked to manage a summer intern and had a great project for a business case. After successfully managing the intern, management could see I was a good leader. I was promoted soon after while pregnant, on leave, and my manager did not drive it, it was all me. So I think sometimes we think we have barriers, right? Like how my, she was told, I, you can't manage people because you haven't managed people before. Well. How are you gonna get an opportunity to manage people if you don't have an opportunity to do so? So this is a great example of taking a situation that maybe seemed impossible, finding a way to build in that experience into your current role so that then you can stretch to the next role, okay? And I think we have a lot more control over our choices than we give ourselves credit for, right? She could have easily checked out and be like, well, you know, I'm pregnant, I'm gonna go on leave, like they're not gonna get me, promote me, I'm not gonna have the opportunity, so I had to make a business case, I had to make a different choice to create that opportunity for myself. Okay, so here's our next exercise. This is one of my favorites. Who's ever done a SWOT analysis before? All right, so what does it stand for? You got it, you got it. So us business people, we love this. This is an oldie but goodie uh, uh, business planning tool. And if the strengths are the things you're really good at. I'll give you some more clues behind this. It sounds pretty self-explanatory, but think about the things you get positive feedback on. Think about the things people ask for your help to do. Those are clues into what your strengths are. The second area is weaknesses. What are not your strengths? As hard as you try, you're never gonna be amazing at this. So for me, details. Anything detail-oriented is, and I've written books, right? I have people that help me edit things. But if I have to get a hold of a spreadsheet, I mean, you're tell I am lighting a candle, playing classical music, locking the door. 
so drained, I lose my energy. That's another clue that it's a weakness. Is it something that takes energy away from you because it's so hard for you to do? And a lot of times when I'm working with leaders, it might be something like project management. You have to do it, right? You end up doing it a lot but it is not your secret sauce, okay? So as hard as you try, this is something you're never gonna be known for. Think about it that way. Uh, and then what happens with the SWOT analysis is strengths and weaknesses flip, okay? So your strengths actually become your opportunities. How do you leverage those unique strengths? So think about it that way. And then your weaknesses, you just wanna mitigate these, right? So me crunching numbers and spreadsheets, probably not a great idea. Right, so maybe my strategy beyond that is to delegate more, right? Or to say no to analytical types of tasks, if at all possible in my business. So I just want you to think for a moment about this, and I want you to start with the strengths first. Do not start with the weaknesses. We have a tendency to beat ourselves up a little bit. Give yourself credit for your strengths, and just jot down, what do you get good feedback on? What do people ask for your help on? So these again are clues. This is gonna be very helpful to think about our purpose statement here in a moment. Weaknesses, as hard as you try, not your jam. And then you flip opportunities, how do you leverage your strengths, threats, how do you mitigate the weaknesses. The first time I taught this and I said, we're gonna do a SWOT analysis. Someone's like, SWAT, like the police? <laughs> Not that kind of spot. Think about strengths and weaknesses, and then the opportunities and threats are how to operationalize that. How do you build a strategy around that? And when you think about your strengths, ideally, you would be using these on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, that might be a reason you're in this room. <laughs> you might be at a pivot point if you're not in a position to use your strengths. So while you're wrapping that up, one other talking point I just wanna share is there's really two banks of things that inform kind of where you should be focused on. And strengths are really important, so those are what they call the skills, kind of taking inventory of your current skill set, the things you're good at, the things you have experience doing. But there's another side of this that's important, and I call those the wills, okay? So those are the motivations, the passion, right? So you can't, sometimes we have these skills that we don't enjoy using, right? So when you think about the intersection of your skills and wills, so I'd ask you as you look through your strengths there, kind of highlight or circle, not only is it a strength, but it's something you really, really enjoy using. So where do you have your skill and will match up? And for anybody that's taken StrengthsFinder, Myers-Briggs, DISC, all of these are great feeders. After this, I would highly recommend if you have some of those assessments sitting around, look through. You're going to see common words in there that's going to also help beef this up. I would also encourage you to ask for feedback. So past managers, current managers, peers family if you want to <laughs> but if you ask him what do you think I'm really good at right so this was really interesting for me when I was at my well, I would argue I was in a perpetual state of pivot points in my career because I was always like Monday morning like oh, I have to go you know I was not ever really focused on my will side I was so focused on my skill side that I was missing out because I wasn't doing the thing I really found passion and purpose in. And I was lucky enough, uh, my mom always, I would hear her in the back of my head saying, Julie, you're meant to help women. I was like, ah, 
whatever, I went to business school, I'm gonna go make money, right? What does that mean? Right, but if I had really been listening and doing some of the self-reflection, it would have been so obvious that that's where I should be focused. It took me a lot longer to get to where I am than it needed to. So this is kind of a shortcut in a career transition or at a reflection point that skill and will marriage is very insightful. Okay, so I'll pause for thoughts. Thoughts, what do you see and show up on your inventory? Who wants to share? Go for it. Yeah, go for it. I can count on you back there. I, yeah, I'm old. I mean, those barriers are gone now. So, <laughs> um, I've already had the career. Yeah. You know, the 25 year real estate world business, and then I owned a campground for the last 20 years, and now okay. I'm back to doing what I want to do. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, uh, strength, I think I'm a good inspire people. Yep. I think I'm a good leader and speaker. I'm emphatic. Uh, people confide in me. Mm -hmm. I have a good eye. Uh, and uh, I've learned a lot about myself by teaching the vision board workshops. That I oh, teach. that's a great technique for this as well. Okay. And that's what led me to hypnosis. Ah, so you're putting it in your brain, right? The, that vision. Okay. Uh, weaknesses, however, <laughs> is uh, Lack of organization. Okay. You know. Yep. Too much data, too much stuff, too much everything. Yep. You know. So it might be like the follow through piece might be more of a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I, I fall prey to that as well. Um, and so I'd encourage you think about some of those key words that showed up in your strengths. You mentioned a vision board, you know, having something. I um, write my goals on masking tape. I'll share with you guys. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but I move it around in different places on my office until my husband will come in and say like, whoa, it's like a beautiful mind going on in here. Like, what are you writing all over the walls for, right? But putting it somewhere where you can see it. I mean, there's a lot of my clients that'll just put um, key messages or key phrases or parts of their um, purpose statement, they'll put on a post-it note on their rear view mirror, but you see it, right? You see it over and over again, and it becomes a self-fulfilling kind of prophecy, right? The more you remind yourself of that. Absolutely. Other thoughts? Please. Yes, I'll go next. Um, so for strengths, I put a graphic design, creativity, problem solving, um, mediation, and thinking. Oh, thinking. I like that. Okay. I'm really good at thinking. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, weakness, uh, spelling, grammar, editing, cat brain. Mm, cat brain? Yeah. <laughs> I get distracted very easily. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't heard it said that way before. Okay, yeah, great self awareness there. Please. I'll just I'll bring up one, one strength, one weakness because they're kind of related. I'm very good at synthesizing information. Yeah. You know, like I can read newspapers, magazines, and everything, and all of a sudden the whole world makes sense to me, but I can't analyze uh, anything. Like, I cannot use an Excel spreadsheet, I can't, yep. you know. And I even took a class in that because I knew it was a weakness, and I did okay, but I mean, I still, it was a, such a struggle, yeah. so I'm thinking, why, where, how can I go through the Oh, so synthesis, but not data analysis. Uh, yeah. That's interesting, because you would think there would be some overlap there. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, that's really good. So one thing I want to highlight that you're bringing up is sometimes when we overuse a strength, it can become a weakness. So for anyone that's taken Strengths Finder before, a lot of times when you're overusing those strengths, they show up for you. I'm a maximizer, so I love ideas. I love to always think I can make things better. The follow through on any one of those ideas, I have 20 and it's really hard for me to follow through on just the amount that I can actually do. So think about that when you overuse that strength that might show up. But that, that's an interesting thing to noodle with. We'll keep that one moving forward. Um, so now we're gonna work on our purpose statement. So I'll kind of give you some examples of how this framework works. So I mentioned before that the, uh, it goes up at the top here. And when I was first defining my coaching business and I was going through my own coaching certification and practicing a lot of learning these tools and exercises, one thing that was really helpful for me is that I told myself what I wanted to do. So the answer to the question, what do I want? right? What is my goal? I told myself that story in present tense, okay? So at the time, I'd done some leadership facilitation, I'd done some career development, I'd done some of these things, but was I an expert? I don't know, right? But if I kept telling myself I'm not an expert, I would never be an expert. So one of the tools I like is to put your purpose statement in terms of 
I am. So it's a present tense statement. So what I want you to do now is kind of think about I am fill in the blank, okay? And what answers, you, the questions you want to answer with your I am statement, with your purpose statement, are essentially I am good at this, right? I want to do this. So what you had in your visioning, what you had in your strengths, what you had in your opportunities, these are all gonna kinda come in, but I want you to basically fill in the blank of I am. And this could be aspirational. So this is likely again to be kind of where you're going three years from now, but in terms of a present tense statement, so you can articulate it and start to map behavior to support and validate that statement. So for me, I am an expert in leadership development, facilitation, and career game plan coaching, right? What's helpful about this, think about you're in the elevator scenario, right? Someone pops on the elevator, you've got a minute, 90 seconds to explain what you do. You're at a networking event where someone's like, what do you do? You really want to be able to articulate in a short statement what it is you're about. So this is your purpose statement. This is your I am. This could be something you already are living full-heartedly today. It could be you're 80% there. In this case, I was probably 50% there when I originally wrote this. That's okay. Don't stop present, your present story from holding you back from what your future story is. But if someone did ask you what it is that you do, what do you want, tell me about yourself, how would you answer it in a term very succinctly that someone would look, hmm, okay, I get it, I get what you do, right? They're gonna be able to help you, maybe connect you with other people, connect you with resources. They might actually be a potential client or investor or whatever that looks like for you. But if you can't articulate what you're about, no one's gonna be able to help you. So I want you to kind of craft your statement, just work on it, we're probably gonna get it loose, like 60 to 80% there tonight. But fill in the statement, I am fill in the blank. Like them to get, again, kind of think about that elevator situation, 60 seconds or so. How could you articulate what it is you want, what it is you do in a succinct statement? Does that make sense? I am, just keep going. It does not have to be perfect. If you get stuck, look back at the strengths, look back at your vision, and don't be thinking about how you will do it, that's the next step in the goals. Just what it is. What do you do? I am fill in the blank. Don't worry about the wordsmithing, the versus and versus yeah. then. You know you've got it farther along if you're worrying about those words. Take 80%, just good enough. I'm going to give you the opportunity to share with a partner and kind of help each other articulate what you've come up with so far and give each other some feedback on your statements. I highly encourage you to pursue feedback with other people that know you well. 
if it makes sense to them and they shake their head, you're in good shape. If they're like, hmm, then you've got some work to do still, which is okay, this is an evolution. So I've actually updated my statement many times over the years. So kind of year four, I was, it's tweaked. It's not completely different. So people get confused when you're constantly changing directions, right? So you wanna stay, again, back to the guardrails, you wanna stay in some zone, probably, so that people get what you want and they can shake their head and be like, oh yeah, I could see that, right? But you can tweak it a little bit over the years. So mine actually now is, um, I do leadership development, career development, and to promote gender equality. It's actually much shorter than that. It's everything on my website is those three areas. Um, my speaker sheet is what I lead with, those areas. Um, it's my hashtags on social media, as I use those terms over and over again. People have to hear the same thing a lot to understand what you're about, right? You feel like, it's like, why don't they know this? But they need that consistency over and over again. Um, my LinkedIn profile, which we'll talk a little bit about tonight, LinkedIn profiles are super important, right? I would argue way more important than a resume nowadays. Have you noticed that people do those brackets on their headline, it's called your headline, say so bracket them now, those, the words I just said, career development, leadership development, gender equality, those are my brackets on LinkedIn. So everything people see about me is consistent. They understand what I do, and then it can be very easy for them to say, oh yeah, I should talk to her or I shouldn't, right? So I'm putting it out in the universe so that people can easily understand what I'm about. Okay, so this moment, go ahead and pause and kind of get some feedback. So if you just want to turn to your partner, it looks like everybody has somebody they're sitting close to, maybe you two in the back. Get some feedback. Check in on what you have for your vision, your strengths, your SWAT, and your purpose so far. Give about five minutes. What do you say? He just punted. It's okay if I move around right now. Okay. So what do you want to do for living? Okay, so you said you're going to an organization. Okay. But are you working in other things? And I couldn't answer him. Hmm. He was very self aware of himself. Yeah. Like, the perspective taking. Yeah. Yeah. Like the different ways that mm -hmm. <laughs> Empathy. But I do that more like large scale, not one on one. Because that actually, it, it exhausts me. Yeah. It's not efficient. I'm like an efficient distributor of information. Yes. <laughs> like if I can, because I, I just took over a course and only on the second week of the course. Yeah. I think this is more like the yeah. career curriculum and more than anything else. How oh, cool. So that's so. That's a great aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so going back to this, because I've kind of you know, been that's what I, yeah. redefining it as like an experience. Mm -hmm. right here. And okay. I had, I even so had my like, like my branded, like these are the three things that I, yeah. you know, I have on my, you know, on my desk, but I haven't looked at it in a while. Perfect time to refresh yeah, it. No, I was, I just moved it this morning so that I could look at it like, this week. I should have brought it with me. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Well, it sounds like a pivot. I mean, it sounds like a small pivot from individual coaching to group coaching or yeah. facilitation. Well, you know, it's like internal pivoting. It's how can I yep. take the job I have and mm-hmm. shift it? Yep. Which is because of that. Like, promoted to assistant director this spring and yeah. took over the chair position for one of our consortium. Like, yeah. All these things that one of the weaknesses is actually saying that. Yeah. Hey, would you guess? That's well, that's where the goal setting is going to be really yeah. important because then you can establish, these are my goals, so if it doesn't fit into that, uh, i got to say no to that. So I'm trying to figure out how the assessment and the data stuff works in with all the kids. I'm trying to find my own mm-hmm. <laughs> I am just great to hear about also the data and analytics and like Sounds like problem solving. Yeah, there's a lot of I mean, a lot of problem solving. Yeah. Like, well in different perspectives, right? Taking different perspectives to find to solve problems. Yeah. Like my dream would be to be more of a consulting role where I can come in and like yeah. let me just observe. Yeah. Like I'm just, I love observing things. Yeah. Just like watching how they work. Like that's one of the reasons I like to direct you and teach you. Yeah. It gives me that opportunity mm-hmm. to observe things. Mm-hmm. 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 Tony doesn't like mm-hmm. 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 recommendations. Okay. So you've got a lot of fun fun themes to play with there. Well, working in career services, career education, it almost provides two opportunities to think about this stuff. Yeah, it could, yes, it can hinder you. All right, if you haven't switched yet, move towards switching or sharing if you haven't shared. Or if you already have, that's fine. I'll give you another two minutes. Well, you, you like I games, think right? it's hard because but I don't. have you ever thought about it's like have you ever tried ideas of like this would be a cool game and it worked like this choice and what she's saying am I doing it for myself or for others I feel like the others are definitely taking over and saying that's not what you want to do because I get that uh uh-uh. uh would you just get over here? She wants to be a part of it. Oh. I don't really, I couldn't answer question one. Yeah. So I've been a little lost. Oh. That's all right. But I'm content with that. Okay. Well, and I, I think maybe that's something to reflect on a bit more. If you don't know the answers to that question, that's something to think about, mm-hmm. right? But there might even be some meaning, and it was about your niece, right? Yeah. There might be some things about relationships or helping, or there's probably some nugget in there you can pull from. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, you do? Oh. Uh, I am a successful business owner of my own studio. Ooh. I love that. Very cool. A successful. And this is something that's not true today. No, You're working towards. I, I'm, a, I'm a marketing director yep. right now, but eventually, like, I went to school for entrepreneurship. Okay. So I don't have a marketing degree. I have yep. a degree in entrepreneurship, and it's kind of like that divide in myself. I love what I do, but I want to do yeah. this. Even though, like. So this the the thought of going out on my own and not having a secure paycheck is kind of oh yeah tell me about it there's some sleepless <laughs> nights but you know if it, if it was always in there you know if, if 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 you looked at it and you have to say well that's always been there in me mm-hmm. at some point you have to say yes to it right yeah that's what everyone says. Well, maybe it's breaking ba- down that big vision to like some small steps, is which we're going to talk about next. So setting goals around it. Okay, has everyone had a chance to share? Everyone had a chance to share? You know, some conversations were very deep and insightful. Other ones, it's like, i got to think about this some more. Um, so at this point, if you're feeling overwhelmed, that is completely normal. I work with clients weeks and months on things like this, especially if you're truly at a pivot point and you're like, I don't know what to do, okay? So you're not alone. Do you want to share in the back what, some of what you're talking about? We didn't get a chance to talk about me. We're still working on that. Okay. She's like going to the coach mode back there. I saw her. She's like, all right, what do you want? <laughs> well, we had a great purpose statement. Would you mind sharing yours? Yours was great. Oh, um, I am a successful business owner of my own art studio. Ah. So th- this is something he hasn't yet done, but he's been wanting to do. You have an entrepreneurship, education. So there's kind of nuggets in there. Um, I would encourage you to kind of think about your life so far. And if you were to kind of break down key experiences that you've had, whether that's education um, or that's 
uh, different industries you spend time in, there are clues in your history about your future, right? The fact that you studied entrepreneurship, right? You're like, I know I wanna, I wanna work for myself, but man, the thought of not getting a paycheck is really scary. I understand this, that was definitely was a concern of mine as well, um, which is why our next step is so important, is that we're gonna take kind of that bigger aspirational purpose statement. So if those of you who wrote something or have something kind of loosely constructed that you're not yet doing today, but maybe it's in that three year kind of horizon, which it sounds like you might be playing around with kind of a three year, maybe. Let's break that down. So one of the best techniques in goal setting is to take a big goal and make it smaller, kind of chunk it into small chunks, okay? Because when we try to bite off a whole big goal like starting a business, it's so easy to put that off, right? But instead, if maybe you were to put it into, okay, I'm gonna file for my tax ID number, I'm going to um, build out my service offerings, I'm gonna do some research. You know how you can see, like you can make those into, that bigger vision into smaller, more digestible stepping stones to get there. Okay, so for those, anyone that likes to hike outside, I love hiking, right? When you come to like an impasse of a body of water, right, no one tries to like Hercules jump across the river. What do you do? You look for the, you do, well, hey man, if you have success with that, that's great. I look for the rocks, right? Because I'm gonna take small steps to get to that bigger step. And that's what we need to do with our career plans is think three years from now where I'm gonna be with my purpose, but then dial it back and we're gonna break it into smaller time chunks to get there. So this is where goal setting comes in place. And so this is kind of the second, so I mentioned, this is kind of like a tree, right? Your purpose statement is where everything hangs from. Now your goals are kind of going to be like the pillars within it, okay? And what's really important, you talked about saying no to things. So you're going to set goals that help you achieve your purpose statement, okay? So if it does not help you achieve your purpose, then you cannot write it as a goal, okay? So that might be pursuing some certification, that might be um, joining some group, whatever it has to do with, it has to help you achieve your purpose. So I would ask yourself now, kind of dial in on your purpose, think about where are you going, who, who, is, who are you, right? How are you gonna describe what you want? And I would take it into kind of no more than three big goals, okay? Because when we write more than three goals, what ends up happening? None of them get done, right? You get overwhelmed and you check out, I haven't done any of this stuff. And then we have a tendency not to give ourselves credit for anything. So for, for my example here that I'm sharing with you, when I first set out to start Pivot Point, it was basically three key things that I needed to do to be a successful business owner. If I was an expert in leadership development and career development, and now gender equality, I would write, develop and promote three coaching tools for my coaching business, publish two best-selling books, and coach 100 high potential mid-career women. Ironically, I have done all of those things, and I did them much quicker than three years. Why? Because I looked at them all the time. And I'll show you some techniques to remind yourself of your goals. But I do like having a metric here. So I tried to put, you notice I put two books, three coaching tools, 100 clients. That's nice to have a metric. So if your goal is not specific and you don't know when you have achieved it, how are you gonna know that you need to update your goals? Right, so having some sort of metric, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar, have you heard of SMART goals? Yeah, yeah, it, it's interesting. The corporate environment's kind of going away from those. I, I can see why. There's a few of the letters that I'm like, attainable? Like really, it should probably be challenging. Um, there's some realistic, yeah. Um, timely is important though. So I do really like the three year filter. So take another look at your purpose statement, kind of reflect back on what you've gone through so far. And if your purpose statement is not all the way done, that is okay. I would still ask yourself the question, for me to be the best version of myself three years from now, what needs to be true? What will I have accomplished to know that I did what I set out to do? Okay, so for me, I knew those three things had to happen for, for me to hit my financial goals, for me to have the kind of impact and influence that was really important for me. So what are the things that will have happened three years from now that you will know that I've achieved success? Is that fair? Pick like three things that you would put on your game plan. And if you don't have a metric right now, that's okay. I would encourage you to think some line in the sand of when you'll know that's true. Make sense?
And I've got a workbook to dig through this later. I know this is an hour. I usually do this in a half day, so I'm going really quick today. So think of this as an overview just to get started. Chances are what was in your vision, there's probably some elements there that ring true. purpose statement, that's why. That one. One good. <laughs> so this is something you're going to need to spend some time on. It's okay if you came up with kind of a tsunami of different goals here. What I would encourage you to do is to really dial in on, if my purpose is true, what will I have done? And, and you probably just need to spend some time thinking about that. Right, if I'm a successful business owner of having my own studio, it's probably pretty clear what are the pillars that I will have had to have hit for that to be a true statement. Mm -hmm. So mind sharing what you came well, up with? I put down, um, so our studio has been a cartoonist more so. So develop a daily slash weekly comic um, and then collect those into um, books yeah. to redistribute um, and then merchandise it. Oh, so you've kind of built down your product development process. I've been thinking about this since I was like eight years old. Okay. Okay. What's interesting about those goals, those might be short term ones, and then you reset the next wave of them, but that gets your store up and or your studio up and running. Okay, cool. Anyone else have something you want to get some feedback on from the group or thoughts on your, on your goals? Well, I own a campground. Okay. So I'm trying to convert uh, a garage. Yeah. <laughs> into a place where I can teach the vision board workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that way I can set my own price to make it easier. I've done them uh, for Richmond Art Museum and they yeah. kind of come up with a price and it's restrictive. Okay, so you need a functional workshop yeah. area, okay. Yeah, and I, you know, that way more people can come, yep. all that kind of stuff. And then I need a, I've, I've been thankfully using private offices here for my hypnotism practice. Okay. Uh, but I'd like to create an office space. Okay. There. So having functional space for client engagements is important yeah. for you. Okay. That's a great one. So, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, and then I would encourage you too, if it's something big like that that might take time or resources, I mean, these are the real world constraints, right? So you might want to even break that goal down a little bit smaller, and that's where our action steps will come into place. Okay, okay good. Uh, others? I just want to kind of quickly walk through the last two steps. So competencies and action steps, and then we'll set a commitment before we leave today. Um, competencies, again, are skills, attributes, or behaviors that are important to us fulfilling our purpose. So if your I am statement, you are having a successful studio, you are having client engagements, whatever that is, whatever that looks like, what are the skills, behaviors, or attributes that are gonna be super critical to your success? So for me, as somebody that speaks, that coaches, that does a lot of workshops and group facilitation, influence president, presence, presidents, <laughs> not running for president, but <laughs> yeah, maybe, uh, confidence. Those are really three key pillars for me. So what does this do for me? Why is this important? I could go to a lot of professional training, seminars, pursue a lot of different certifications. I get invited to do networking events all the time. Time is finite. I only have so much time to do these things. So when I check in on something I'm gonna invest some professional development dollars in, it has to drive my confidence, it has to improve my presence, or it has to in help with my influence. So example I'll give you is this year, I got certified in unconscious bias. That was huge for influence for me, right? And just a lot of confidence too. They gave me a lot of confidence. I knew a skill not a lot of people know. Right, but it gave me a big influential reach. And now when I share with people that I have that credential, I go, oh, wow, Julie's certified. You know, it, it reinforces that behavior that's important for me showing up and engaging audiences and continuing to work on the crafts that are important to me. So think about these as filters 
These are the things you're gonna focus training time on, professional development time on, maybe hire a business coach or whatever that looks like for you. You're gonna wanna know kind of the three key behaviors that are important. So if you had to think about it, and anyone have these on their performance reviews? A lot of companies like to use competencies as kind of how you got your goals accomplished. I'd encourage you to think about ones that maybe you've gotten positive feedback about, Maybe they're ones that are gonna be absolutely critical, new ones for you to hit your purpose statement. It could be things like communication. It could be things like leadership. There are a ton of different skills that are important, but for you to hit that purpose statement, for you to be that future awesome version of yourself, what are the attributes that are gonna drive your success? For you, it might be something like business planning. It might be something like marketing your business. Do they pop to you already? <laughs> yeah, I wrote three. <laughs> cool, what are they? I put um, being consistent. Okay. Um, motivation. Yes. Um, and then engagement. Ooh. Engagement with the community and yep. getting the product. So consistency, engagement, and motivation. Yeah, those well, are. Any jobs marketing, so I think I'm pretty. Yeah, but those are the important things for you to keep in your forefront, right? Because when those things start to erode, your business starts to erode. These go hand in hand. These behaviors help drive those results. Other thoughts? Other words, behaviors, competencies that popped up for you? Things that will be important for you to achieve your purpose? Please. I'm a development director, and I like that. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I really need to work on is like just being able to kind of read people better and uh, understand people better. Yeah. Because um, I, I have really good like people skills and communication yep. skills, but sometimes I'm not always good at interpreting ah. how other people are, are feeling or what other people can like bring to you. So like a perceptiveness kind of element. Okay, that's a great skill to work on. And there's tons of resources out there to improve that, right? So this, these might be the books that you choose to read. Um, these might be tools. Um, self-assessments, things like that that you might take to get even better at that. You mentioned empathy before. It was going to be an important skill set for you. And facilitation, yeah. right? So playing with those words and thinking about, well, maybe I need to work on my facilitation craft. You know, that was something for me a few years ago. I wanted to get into a facilitation certification program, whatever it might be. But that's going to help. That behavior will help you drive your purpose and your goals. So last but not least, I wanted to share this trick that I do in my office, and I still use this process four years later. I'm a visual person. Most of us are visual people. So the great thing about the game plan is ideally it would fit on one sheet. So when I work with clients, they have their purpose statement, they have their goals, they have their competencies, and they have their action steps. The action steps is where it gets really detailed. You're not going to know all the details today, but how mine looks and how it shows up for me, I told you those three goals I had for myself. I would write my purpose statement on my whiteboard. I have my annual goals. So I, I take the three-year goals and dial them back a step further to annual goals. It's usually revenue numbers, influencers on LinkedIn, that kind of thing. And then I break it down 90 days. Okay? And the reason I picked 90 days is because it's really hard to see beyond 90 days. I can do about three things really good in a month, okay? And some of them might be small, some might be big, right? But if I wanted to write all my new curriculum in September, that would be setting myself up for failure, right? So I know my capacity most months. I can look at my calendar, see how much time I'm gonna be training, traveling, doing engagements, and how much bandwidth I have to do the other stuff. So here's how I do it. I always have a bucket of things this week, kind of key tactics I'm gonna do this week. I never let myself write more than three things on that list, because Again, when I write more than three, none of them get done. And I do three goals for each month. So right here, I think I'd, I'd erased some of them. But I take kind of three key initiatives that, again, check in with my annual goals that map to my three-year goals. So see how this is kind of a cascade that comes down? Just like in any good strategic plan, right? You have a big lofty vision, but you need to break it down into smaller chunks. Having a 90-day plan of key action steps that you will take you know, maybe it's not opening up the new workshop space in your example, but hey, maybe I'm gonna start looking at different options and make a decision at 90 days, whatever that looks like for you. Whenever I'm writing new curriculum, like a course, it takes me three or four hours to write a course once I have all the knowledge in my head already. You know, that's a big initiative for me to plop down on there, right? And so thinking about what is your bandwidth, 
What, do you, what needs to happen? What is mission critical for you to fulfill your purpose and hit your goals? You wanna hit the heavy hitters first. So once you have a success early, it's a primer for your brain. Like, oh, I did that, that was hard. I thought that was gonna be difficult. Reward that, right? And so once you see that you can do things that you thought might be difficult, then it's gonna propel that positive energy onto the next task. It gives you that positive momentum going forward. So I want you just to think about key action steps. If you had to, say you were sitting in front of your, your own whiteboard and you were thinking about key activities in the next 90 days, what would be some tasks you would bucket into September, October, November? And maybe just write down some ideas to start your task list. But think about that 90 day plan for you. What are some key tasks that you can do? Maybe it's finishing your game plan. Maybe it's getting input on your game plan. Maybe it's taking some assessments, reading some books, whatever it is for you. Got it all figured out, Jennifer. <laughs> These are big questions. They're not meant to be all solved in one night. Don't feel bad if you're, if you're at a point where you're like, I'm overwhelmed right now. That is very normal. Not my intention at all, but very normal. So for those of you who have a to-do process, what do you use? I'm sharing the whiteboard, but what other to-do um, time management techniques work for you? To done. <laughs> How oh, I love that. To done. So here's something that's really good. Even if you're already going to do something that's on your list, write it down anyway. <laughs> right? It's kind of a positive Jedi mind trick, if you will, because it feels really good. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get that done, and it's going to feel really good when I cross that off. We tend not to really um, recognize what we have done. We never seem to give ourselves enough credit. There's been a lot of research done just on positive psychology. And you think about um, reward punch cards, right? So they've done studies where they've had a punch card with 12 and two pre-punched when they give it to you versus 10. It's the same amount of punches, right? But the one with 12 gets done way more quicker than the one with 10. So if you could think about that is, you think about it as kind of a barometer. What could you fill at the bottom that already gets you one step forward? So when you take one step forward on it, you're far more likely to take more and more steps forward. Any, any company that's done fundraising, you never start out saying have zero, right? You always have something in the pot. Seeding the tip jar, seed your own tip jar, okay? So if there's something you're going to do or something that's a um, easy to knock out thing, go ahead and just put that on your list, get that done and be like, oh, what's next? Oh, what's next? And reward it. Celebrate success. You need to recognize when good things have happened so that you'll want to do more of that. Okay, so as we leave tonight, um, I have a workbook. So if you want, um, I'll, I'll just, um, I think I have email addresses or if, if you just wanna jot yours down to make sure I have it, I can send you the workbook that goes along with this. And then um, I want you to think about one commitment. So if it had to be just one thing that you would leave with in the hour of your life that you've spent together with this amazing group of people in Richmond, Indiana, what would be the one thing that you could commit to. It could be something small. It could be finishing your game plan. But what's just one thing you'll commit to doing? You've got a great group here to help hold you accountable. I do want you to write it down. So if you write it down, your chances go up. And then please know, I know this is the beginning of a journey, uh, I would I uh, encourage you, if you made the time to come here today, this is probably a question that's lingering on your brain. You're spending headspace thinking about what's next, right? Oh, I'm not sure what I wanna be when I grow up. I hear these things all the time. I promise you have way more power over your choices and you have way more authorship of your plan. If you're waiting for someone else to come to you with your plan, it is not going to happen. <laughs> I believe that we have the power within us, but we've gotta take that first step. So 
please uh, you know, commit to holding each other accountable to your commitments. Uh, get feedback from other people. Reach out to other people. Network and get help with this. You do not have to do it all on your own. Um, really good listeners and sounding boards are the right people to be talking to that will help you facilitate it. But keep going. Keep taking positive action towards the future. So with that in mind, we'll wrap up today's session, Kate. But thank you so much for everybody's time. Thank you very much. Thanks.